just recently, I contacted my instructional design team. You know, when you've taught the course for five years, six years, whatever, you think, okay, what's there to it, right? I can go. And so one day I thought, I'm sure they have some great ideas that I don't, because they have a different view, they have a much broader view. And our instructional design team was great. I asked her to review my course, you know, see what was missing, what else I could do to improve it. And she gave me some great suggestions. So I think those two are, those two groups have really helped me tremendously. I think, all right, what am I going to do this semester that's gonna be better than last semester and engage the students more um, and make them happier that they're taking an online course. Because I do think that some students take an online course because it is their only mode of education. They may not necessarily uh, want to do it. It might not be their first choice. For other students, it is their first choice. So I'm trying to, like, my emotion is, ooh, yay, what can I add now? You know, kind of a thing. It, it's, it's always a, a little challenge. Okay, we use video lectures. We don't just use a textbook, so we use video lectures. And because of the feedback loop that you get from the students, you can tell where they're confused because they're writing things in the discussion post. You get more detail of their confusion. So you can, you can guess, you know, but you don't have to guess. You can see even if they ask a question, I always ask them to uh, tell me up to where you understand and then tell me where you confuse. And what I typically find out is where they thought they understood is where the confusion is. They just go off the rails. So then all of a sudden it doesn't make sense, but they went off the rails back here someplace. But I can see it. So then I can go back and I can look and I can look at the video of the lecture and I can say, what did we say? What did we do? And I can fix it. So we tend to refresh our online courses maybe every two years, maybe every three years, depending on what we say. So I was teaching statistics for nurses, and nurses are very anxious, largely, about taking statistics. In fact, it's the reason many don't come back to school. So making that work in a hybrid environment was really critical to me, is making sure we could still get the um, interaction that they needed so that they could master the material and go on successfully. And I was able to do that fairly easily in a hybrid environment. It was a little more challenging going from the hybrid to fully online, but again was able to make that transition which provided more access to nurses again in that um, that they could come back and complete a bachelor's degree. So the feedback I got in that process helped me change what I was doing and mold what I was doing to meet the student needs. But it also gave me an opportunity to look at the data from all three formats of teaching the same class and found that my grade distribution was almost exactly the same in all three formats, that my retention rates were almost exactly the same in all three formats, and that I was able to get students from where they come into the course to where I wanted them to be at the end um, in all three formats. What we do is we look at the class and we look at what the objectives of the faculty are and then we see where are the issues where students aren't reaching those objectives and then we look at why because most of the time the faculty know why it's just how do, how do you fix it so we come up with assets to help fix the problem um, so we develop those and then of course we use blackboard or whatever we have to to come up with a way to implement so every single course isn't developed the exact same way people say well you use discussions in all your classes no yes but they're used entirely different depending on the class uh, depending on what the objectives are. I may use quizzes in every class, but they're entirely different in the way they're designed. So you have to look at what the objectives and what the content of that class is. The students vote with their feet, and so your courses fill, and they fill, and they fill, and, and there becomes a demand-driven um, part of the supply because it's, there's a need for it. And so you see, we had sub, several courses we would offer as a hybrid or as a fully online and have students would have the option. Um, Stats was one of those. And we said, you know, there's some people who really felt like if I was in person, I would have an, it would be easier for me to do that. And we would have six people register for hybrid and we would have 25 people in a full Stats online and have people requesting override codes. And um, so we, we had to adapt. You have to adapt to the student needs, otherwise, otherwise you're not going to have a, a program.
The debates and the discussions I think I'm particularly proud of. It's taken us time. You know, the first time we rolled this out, um, I have to go in and I have to look and say, okay, you, you think you're really good at communication? <sighs> Until you teach. You know, and then you find out that what you thought you said isn't what people heard. And after a while, you have to say, which is why we look at our videos. Believe it or not, before we redo our videos, we actually read the discussion posts from the year before. Because if enough students, which are really good about a big class, if enough students didn't get it, it isn't them. It's probably you. So you need to go back and say, well, what did I say? You know, and then how can I say this differently? So I think that part of the model is the part that I love the best. That you know, when I go to refresh the course, I have all this information that's telling me, okay, I thought they were going to have a hard time with this, and they didn't. And I, I thought they'd get this, and they didn't. So I need to cut the lecture on this to two minutes and expand it over here to five. And it gives me that information to make the learning better for the student and to clarify. Um, that's the part I think I like the most on our side um, and what we get out of it. So I think that's the most important part. And we feed that in the courses that I um, help. In other words, I, 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 I run the online components for how we facilitate. What we do is we give that information to the faculty. If we see across you know, a problem, we, we hand it to them. And it's, it's so fulfilling to see the faculty the next year give that lecture, and they fixed it. Um, so it works out very well. So I'm very proud of that part of it, I guess, the feedback part. Because you're not just thinking all in your head and what I thought went wrong. There's people telling you what you did wrong. <laughs> your students are telling you, and you can't miss it if you pay attention to what they're telling you. That's probably the part I like the best. It's hard to be hard on. You know, you, you like to think you're so great, you know, that, oh, I communicate really well. But the discussion portions, too, when we first ruled it out, we had a, a grading rubric. And I started to learn that, okay, this is what I wanted but this isn't what I got, which means I need to change the directions and I need to change this reward system so that I'm clearer about what I want. And over time, when you finally see the students giving you what you want, it just, it's what a great feeling. It, it's, you know, okay, I'm finally clear. But we didn't do it alone. We asked the undergraduate teaching assistants to help us with that. Okay, this is what I want. This is what I'm getting. What should I say? And they're very forthcoming in trying to help you solve those problems. So we, we have a, a, a very good team, I guess, between the undergraduate TAs and Bio Online and the faculty, where there's all this feedback, you know, back and forth. And I can say that the students and the TAs have helped make this a success just as much as anyone else at the university. Thank you.